Hello, in this tutorial, I want, just want to talk about how you can create art for Groove Animator. I'm going to be using this little lighthouse example, and this is um, a couple things you need to be aware of is since Groove Animator is about animating strokes, then you really need for the art to be based on strokes. So um, while you can import non stroke based animations or art inside of Groove Animator, um, it's not going to be able to animate the stroke if there isn't a stroke to animate. Now, be aware that we've got some uh, scripts that will take formatted SVG files and reformat them to uh, basically a format that will work with SVG or, or Groove Animator whenever we can. But there's a couple of things where that we really can't uh, do it because of various limitations with the SVG. So it depends on how it's created. So if you're trying to create a bonus for S, uh, for Groove Animator, or if you're trying to sell a pack that is compatible with Groove Animator, make a, um, and so forth, uh, make maybe you're going to make a tutorial and you want to make some SVG files that go with it, this is what you need to do. I do recommend Adobe Illustrator. I'm sorry, you might be able to do this with other programs, Inkscape, uh, there's Gravit.io, there's other programs, but I know for sure how to do this with Illustrator, so uh, I'm going to be showing you Illustrator now. First of all, notice that um, if this is set with a stroke. I know that because there's this kind of blue line down the middle. Now, if I had uh, this as a path, it would look like this. So I'm going to outline this stroke. And now you see that the kind of outline, there's no outline down the middle, and that's what a path looks like. So we don't want that. We want strokes. We want a, a line. Now, another thing that I like to do, because it makes the strokes look nicer, is I go in here and I turn the I turn on the round cap and I do this rounded corner, and you see that it kind of has that that hard edge. Um, makes it one of the nice things about this is a couple things. One is it looks a little bit more whiteboardish, so that the art is kind of compatible both ways, um, and it it just feels a little bit more informal. Notice how this kind just tips down there, and that kind of uh, you know you can move this up if you don't like that, you know things like that. Okay, <clears throat> so um, there's there's that kind of thing. Now, the main really thing that you need to do is when you're saving as, and you do that, you want the SVG of course, and I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. Um, doesn't matter in this case, but you want presentation attributes. That's really the kind of the key here. And you can see here there's other attributes also, and the kind of a lot of the problem with a lot of them is. We need for the lines a couple. There's a couple things that we need. When let's actually look at this um, uh, save as, um, and let's get. Well, you know, this is the nice thing about Il Adobe Illustrator, at least the latest versions, is we can actually look at the code here. So I'm going to show you. This is what a standard SVG line looks like. Now, um, what we need is for the stroke information to be in each line, so that the code or the program knows how to animate um, this, the line, and all that kind. It's of, all the information. The, some of these other uh, formats do not do that, and they kind of use like a um, style sheet kind of approach, and it just makes it uh, very difficult to create the animation. And so. Uh, you know, we need this. So you, the, the presentation attributes, that's really the kind of the key thing. <clears throat> I do pretty much leave the rest of these as it's shown here. I do SVG 1.1, the type SVG, not convert to outline. Uh, the, the subsettings I leave, you know, it does seem to matter that I don't use, you know, ISO. So I've used the UTF. Um, the link, I've done both actually, link and embed. It doesn't seem to make a difference, but presentation attributes does make a difference. I leave these two on, I leave responsive off, and I leave these off. Okay, so, but the presentation attributes really seems to be the key feature besides the SVG uh, 1.1. And then you're, yeah, that should be good to go. Um, now, if you wanna test this, you would put it into a folder and then put it in a subfolder with a name. Like when I create that, I do like triple, you know, AAA underscore test or something like that. And then I select the folder and import it into Groove Animator using the import library. So you can test that if you want to. Just remember you have a kind of a main folder that hosts a subfolder that is the folder that will actually show up in your categories if you want to do that to, to test and otherwise. But those are the kind of the key features to, to do that. Now, uh, one more little tip, you can get things to animate in kind of, um, kind of con a little bit more of a controlled way by by compound uh, grouping them. Not now, not it's it's actually com, uh, you want a compound path, 
And that's with Control Command Eight. So, for example, let's say I wanted. Um, I've actually found that it, you know, like having if I have all of these things animating independently, sometimes it doesn't look as good. Like especially this short one right here. So sometimes these smaller shapes, I will uh, connect them up with a bigger shape, and I'll do something com Command Eight, and that kind of makes it a one shape instead, and the animation is a little bit more satisfying. So. Um, what you don't want to do is do everything as one shape. Then it's all going to animate as one thing and the animation just doesn't look as interesting. So um, if you find that anything is not working, say for example, I, every, every once in a while I found some shapes not working and uh, a couple of them are things like, you know, let's just take this one, if I've got a rectangle that's much smaller like that or uh, more commonly a, a really tiny circle gets kind of clipped or something like that. The thing to do is to simply, you know, basically find another shape, let's maybe like this one, and uh, uh, combine it and just basically the command eight option is what I'm doing. And that's just making a compound path. I said combine, but it's compound path. And that's gonna basically combine them. And what it does is sort of forces the program to treat them as one and it, it, but it can control the animation a little bit more and, and it definitely makes it more interesting. If you have a ton of tiny little shapes, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll select a couple of different ones in random positions and I'll combine it one, or compound it with one shape and uh, or one line or shape. And I'll take a couple of other ones and I'll compound them with another one and so forth. And just in that, that kind of allows me to control the animation a little bit more and, um, and all that kind of stuff and um, forces the program to treat different tiny shapes as a, a bigger shape and that can often lead to a more satisfying animation in Groove Animator. That's not required but um, it, it's just a, an option for you. But otherwise really kind of the you know taking a step back the things that are really kind of key again you don't even have to do the, the by the stroke you can keep it you know with a cap in a corner but I just personally think that's better but the main one is when you save as to SVG, you want to uh, do that in the, uh, let's see, do it one more time here. You want SVG 1.1 and you want presentation attributes in order for it to work properly in Groove Animator.